Hello, friends. My name is Dane Miller. And I'm Mal Spain. And we're your fuck buddies. We're a dating and sex advice podcast where we take your sticky, sexy situations and turn them into sexy, sticky situations. Simply put, we find questions either online or from our incredible listeners, and we answer them right here, right now, every Monday, in your ears, for you. And welcome to our Pride episode. Welcome to Pride. We're proud to have you here. We got uh, We got hot. And heated about things last week. But this week, I mean, we might get hot and heated about things again. I don't know what's going to happen. But uh, this is our, our, our yearly episode where we just say, hey, we're proud of you. Yeah. And we just ha- give a little bit more weight to the queerness of the world. Yeah. Um, I don't have any. Oh, I do have. Uh, I Fuck. Hold on. Let me see if I can find it. There's a. Oh. We, we talked about it uh, last week about how the fact that there are uh, a tons of. So I looked it up. Uh, I, I mentioned that there was, I think I said, 187 uh, anti LGBT legislation. Uh, there's mm-hmm. currently almost 500. So America, that's how, that's how much has has changed in the time and span that I looked it up like a couple weeks ago to now. Uh, there's currently almost, I think it's like 490 something or 400. Jesus. And it's, it's almost 500. But there are states currently passing legislation um, that make them sanctuary states for mm-hmm. Wasn't trans people. Denver? Didn't Denver just do that? Yes, Colorado, I believe, mm-hmm. uh, is is one of them. Um, I think Connecticut also did it. I Again, I don't know. I'm they, Those could be cities. I think Colorado and Connecticut are states. <laughs> I hey, don't know. Dude. Dude, I have no idea. We've said yeah. it before, we are not professionals, and this is definitely under that not professional wheelhouse. But there is a very small percentage. I think there's like 14 sanctuary states right now, and New York is in the process of of pushing that through their legislation as well. So that's a little bit of good news. Um, a little glimmer of hope there. A little bit of hope. Um, so hopefully uh, more states follow suit and realize that uh, – all that shit's bullshit, and we need to protect everyone, and not just people that uh, represent our voting demographic. Mm-hmm. So that being said, should we do some questions? Sure. You want me to start you off there? Yeah. This is by Jock Cubby. Slept with my boss. Need advice. I need advice because I've either fucked up my life or stumbled into something really great. I, 29-year-old male, have been attracted to my boss, Jake, 36-year-old male, since I started my job a couple of years ago. We work very closely, have always had good rapport and banter, become friends outside of work as well, and do a fair bit of social stuff together. I know it's not traditional, but honestly, the vibes are immaculate. We made a big sale and went to celebrate with a couple of colleagues. Got a little bit more drunk than normal, and I ended up at his place. It was some of the best sex I've ever had. Also more emotionally charged than expected. Woke up alone in his bed yesterday morning and had a mini panic attack because, what the fuck, why did I do that? And I realized it was almost 11. Threw on my clothes to make the walk of shame home. Instead, I found Jake playing a video game on his couch. He pointed to the stove. Eggs and sausages are in the oven. You can make coffee with the machine. Bread and butter are next to the toaster. Got my breakfast and ate next to him on the couch. It was very nice and domestic. I felt at home. I planned, so I had to go home. But Jake asked me if he could see me before Tuesday. It's a long weekend in Canada. Probably to talk about what we're going to do now. What the fuck do I do? I'm of two minds. One, end things now and do damage control. Or two, chase what could be a really amazing relationship. Obviously, I'm afraid of ruining my career, but I can find another job. What I might not be able to find is another Jake. The one thing I'm not willing to do is sneak around. To me, these options are mutually exclusive. If anyone has relevant experience, please help. I think this is pretty cut and dried. I think you've laid out exactly kind of what you need to say to Jake and say it to him. Uh, I think, you know, sitting down and having a conversation, especially in in situations like this, where you do work together and Mm -hmm. it wasn't really a planned thing. It just kind of like happened and like, oops, oh, no. Obviously, there was sexual attraction and chemistry prior to the event. But, you know, we all have that sort of like flirtatious vibe with at least one person we work with usually Mm -hmm. so i think you know oops you fucked the dude that you're attracted to and get along with okay that's (laughs) there's no crime in that it Mm -hmm. does obviously make it a little bit difficult because he is your boss 
So there is a power dynamic there that uh, some people could scoff at, but you know, whatever. Um, it also, I really guess, depends on what you do for a living and how that would impact your work. But finally, I think you made, you have very clear boundaries of being like, I don't want this to be a, well, we can't tell anyone at the office. We'll sneak around. Great. It's great that you know that. And mm-hmm. that's something that you definitely need to talk about real quick. So if this is something you want to pursue, I don't see, there's nothing in here that tells me you shouldn't mm-hmm. other, other than, than like the usual, like fucking people at work is risky, you yes. know? Like we've yeah. established that a million times before. And in this case, it is still, it always has that inherent risk because you're shitting where you eat, right? Yeah, exactly. So if you're willing to take that risk and, and you say like, oh, I can find another job. Great. This doesn't sound like it's your dream job. It doesn't sound like something you, you know, worked your entire life to get. Like you're not throwing away decades of, of hard work to be where you are. So if you're willing to get another job, cool, great then you you know that there is a risk. You know that this could go poorly. Great. Assume those responsibilities. So yeah. have a sit down talk with Jake and be like, hey, I really enjoyed the other night. It was a lot of fun. Uh, it was great sex. And I really like you. Um, here's where I like. I would like to continue exploring this, uh, but I don't want to sneak around i don't want this to Mm -hmm. be a you know a dirty little secret that we have to hide from everyone i'm not saying we have to go public immediately but i don't want it to be like you know when when we're at work you're you're you've got your fucking hand on my face and pushing me away every five seconds so that Mm -hmm. no one no one gives us a second glance you know um i would would be second glancing that all day let's be fair why does he keep why does he keep pushing Mark around by the face? Yeah, man. Someone needs to call HR. He's getting yeah. really aggressive with him. <laughs> so I, I think that's like, that's really just it. You have this conversation. You lay down what you're looking for. You lay down what you're not willing to accept and see where he is. And if he's yeah. like, hey, great. I I vibe with all those things. Then cool. Explore it. Why, yeah. why say no to a good thing? A hundred percent. That's the thing. It's like. If this had been, oh, I, you know, I can't believe I finally got this job. I can't risk it. I would, I would be a little bit more hesitant, but you're like, I don't care, whatever. I can get another job. Great. You've already done, you've already fucked them. You know what I mean? It's not like you have to worry about like, oh, will it work out in that way? Things are good. You fucked them. That was good. The next morning was cool. And he wants to see you again. Those are all positives. You don't care about your job in a good way. You know what I mean? Like you're saying, I can get another job. That's a good thing. And as Dane pointed out, it's a good thing that you know what you want and you know what your boundaries are. So realistically, you're good. Like, it's all good. You just really got to, like, lay out what you want and what you expect going forward. Listen to what Jake wants and expects going forward. If those mesh, fuck yeah. If it doesn't, cut it off before it gets bad. And hopefully you guys can just coast and be buds after this. That's the ideal situation is, like, either it works or you guys both acknowledge. Be like, ah, it was a one-time thing. You know, it was a lot of fun, but long term, this ain't going to work. And hopefully that doesn't make things too awkward. Hopefully he doesn't get weird. Hopefully you don't get weird. Mm -hmm. But really, like, you don't really know how that's going to shake out until it shakes out. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like once like once you're aware of this, the general advice of workplaces being dodgy to, you know, be in relationships through and then you're grand and everybody knows that. So you're good. Yeah. Good luck. I hope this works out for you. Sounds great. Uh, I've got exclusively user submitted questions today. Ooh. This comes from Agent Gatekeeper. I'm a gay man that has recently started hooking up with a straight dude that was curious. He continues to insist that he's straight and that he isn't into guys and that he's just exploring. We worked together and the other day we went out with some co-workers after our shift where we met up with some of or a few of his friends. While hanging out, his friends frequently called things gay and teased each other for doing gay things like using a straw or wiping their face with a napkin. Damn, he seemed are they to clock 12 it. and in the 90s? Right? He seemed to clock it was not okay with me, but didn't say anything. At the end of the night, he's just going back to his place, but I declined. Afterwards, I texted him saying that I don't think we should hook up anymore because considering how his friends behaved and how he refuses to acknowledge the fact that having sex with another man is not straight, or <laughs> I don't want to force him to come out or be gay, but I also don't want to be someone's trial run or dirty little secret. What should I do? Now, sorry, that last bit said that they did send that text? Yes. Oh, okay. Because that's what you should do. Yeah. 
you know, I, you, I, I think you've done the right thing. It sounds like you've handled the situation with grace. Um, you've kind of like tried to talk to them, but you've let them live their weird denial existence. But like you, you're, you're right. You can't be in a situation where like people are denying objective fact. And also his friends sound like shitheads. And it sounds like he's not ready for a lot of stuff if he's unwilling to talk to his friends about being shitheads. Because again, like it literally sounds like a bunch of 12 year olds in the 90s. It doesn't sound like presumably adult people in fucking the year of our Lord 2023. That's that's wild to me that that would happen. I spent like straws. Get over there. What the fuck are you doing? And like, yeah. It's weird. Like he obviously has a connotation of gay being a bad thing. I mean, that's that's what it comes down like, to, right? Like you, you, you see fuck it with a his guy friends. and you're a guy. It it is gay. Like, great. You know, you might not be fully gay, you might be bi, right? But bi is still gay. Like it's still queer. It's in that umbrella term, you know? So like that's not a bad thing though. And that's where it the red flags are coming up for me is like he's unwilling to admit that because clearly he thinks it's a bad thing. And I know a lot of people have like, you know, repressed trauma over like whatever like or like self-hatred and blah 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 blah. but like it still boils down to the fact that what you are is something he thinks is bad yeah and what you're doing with him and it's just like that's something he obviously needs to get over and it's gonna suck if you're the person helping him hur- get over those hurdles if at all he even wants to right at the end of the day this is this is a therapist's job and not yours like yes. you are not like i, I think a lot of people uh, and it, and it goes this way for I feel like any uh, straight person or or questioning person who is hoping that they're going to meet someone of you know of whatever they're questioning whether it's someone of the same sex or opposite sex or you know whatever the fact that like oh they're the ones who are supposed to like this is the one who's going to like teach me or this is the one that's going to like make everything make sense and Mm -hmm. it's not that cut and dry and it's also super unfair for the other person to expect them to put everything in place for you when the reason especially in a scenario like this where like the reason you're having such a hard time swallowing that pill is because you've been socialized to think that being gay is wrong or you don't think it, you think it's a bad thing. Like Niall said, or, you know, like there's, or you hate yourself because you think you are gay and you've always been mm-hmm. gay, but refuse to accept it because of, you know, your friends or yeah. family or wherever or you like, grew up. You think it means you're less manly than you were like all, all these fucking things that again, it isn't your responsibility to help them get over as the question asker. And like, Hey, if you wanted that, Sure, I think it would still be a very tough, long, thankless, difficult road, but obviously you don't want that, so you've done the right thing here. Yeah, 100%. You, Even if they were cool, if all the other stuff was fine and they still had these shitty friends and were unwilling to talk to them about it, I think that would still be grounds for being like, yeah, I'm not going to deal with your fucking asshole friends every time we hang out. And also Honestly. the fact that you can't stand up for both yourself and me and just general fucking society these days i lose a lot of respect for you on and i would i would say on the flip side too if i was if i was queer and hooking up with someone and someone refused to accept that they were also queer like if i was sleeping with another dude and they were like no i'm still straight nope completely straight not a single gay thing about me i'd be like I, no i <laughs> i would be so like that would be such a turnoff for me that mm-hmm. someone would be so adamant that what we are doing couldn't possibly be gay despite the fact that it is quite literally like the gayest thing you can do is <laughs> a, a man having sex with another man like that is that is pretty much how you be gay um so- it's funny because the converse is kind of happening on twitter lately where there's a lot of like right wing people like breaking down over like a lot of uh like female fitness influencers who are like super buff and it's like, if you like this, you're gay. And like, just all the memes of people like ripping it out and being like, guys, it's gay to like women now. And it's like, people need to fucking calm down. This is funny because I, I was reading this thing and I saw a, a, a guy on TikTok who was making this point. And I, I love it. And I don't know if we'll have an opportunity to talk about it, but I feel like this is a, a good moment to in, inject it in here um, where uh, someone, a bunch of like trans people or like anti trans folk, uh, who are are very strict of being like there's there's men and there's women and that's it it's a binary there's no there's no in between there's no nothing but they're usually also the first person to be like oh 
you're being soft, you're being feminine, you're not being a man, like mm-hmm. you're being less of a man, blah, blah, blah. So it's like they're fully capable of understanding that like gender can be a spectrum. Like, yeah, I'm I am just a man's in the most man toxic because, way. <laughs> yeah, I'm a man's man because I have a truck and I work out and I eat meat and I, you know, work construction and that's a man. But you, you know, you go and get your nails done and you work in a you know, dance studio. So you're a soft femme man. You're a beta man. It's like, well, yeah. okay. So then you, you understand <laughs> so wait, that there is, sorry, am I on the spectrum of yeah. masculinity? No, I mean, men are men shit. Like, wow. It's funny how your argument immediately falls apart. It was such a great point that I had never thought of before mm-hmm. that I feel like is a great thing to like throw in these fucking like transphobic people's faces. If only, logic and reasoning actually worked on them i know but it's fun to make them sweat you know like i know i'm probably not going to change a lot of people's minds but it's really really fun to make them look like fucking idiots yeah for sure because like i said last time i was like i know we're not going to crush homophobia or transphobia but the more they feel like idiots and feel unsafe bringing it up the better we all are Mm -hmm. hey that's step one and crushing it yep for sure. You know, shut up the people who are the worst about it. And then, you know, people feel like they have less support, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but yeah, as per this question, I think you're fully in the right. I'm sorry that things ended up this way because obviously you were sleeping together for a reason. And it is shitty when what could be a good thing is ruined by these things. But this person has a lot of issues that they need to work out. And you are right that, you know, you shouldn't have to be the one to work this out for them or with them. You know, and and onward to the next person who hopefully could admit that fucking a man is another man is gay. Yeah, I feel like, again, if they try to push back or, like, come up with some bullshit excuses or whatever, just be like, sorry, man, like, I'm I'm a gay man looking to have gay sex. And I, if that's not what we're having, I don't really want to pr- have it with you. Mm-hmm. Like, if we're not having gay sex, sorry, that's what I'm looking for. I yeah. just, you know what I mean? And, like, it, it just seems, it's so bizarre to me. And, but, like, I get it. Like, I understand it. I understand why people are like this. Um, but, like I said, it, it's, it's, it, this is a therapist's job. It's not your job. You're not being paid by the hour to help this dude fucking either, you know, work out some fantasy or work out all of his fucking repressed homophobia and self hatred. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not your job to do because it's only going to put, a, a emotional burden and tax on your personal life yeah. for the sake of this dude who's not even going to tell his friends to shut the fuck up when they're being yeah, absolute yeah. idiots. And that's the thing. That's another separate issue too. If your friends fucking suck and you're okay with that, like again, like that just, it's so bizarre to even hear. Like, again, I'm not particularly surprised. Like people suck. Look at what we talked about with all the fucking laws trying to be enacted in America right now. But like, it just still seems so like anachronistic to have someone in this day and age be like, we got straw that's gay, bro. Like, get the fuck over it. I like the wiping of the face. <laughs> I would love to know how that's gay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you can't wipe your face. Are you fucking crazy? That That's the only thing I agree with. Yeah. It's like if wiping you, your if butt. If you eat wings, man, you gotta, you gotta wear that fucking saucy beard of pride because you're a man and you fuck women. Like, no, it's... Yeah, but that's the thing. We've had questions about people being like, is it gay to wipe my butt? Or like, my boyfriend won't touch his butt to wipe it because he thinks it's gay. It's like, what? What are you doing? The straights are not okay. You know what? It, it, I, as much as I want to fix this, it does... As a single man now, do you know the advantage I have for just wiping my own ass? Like, that's <laughs> not something I ever thought was going to be a big old bonus for me. Yeah. But the fact that I can be like, yeah, no, I wipe my ass. Hey, every time I poop. Yeah. Well, back when I was single, my Tinder profile just said, you won't have to wash your couch if I sit on it. <laughs> you know, like I Gross. won't seep through my own jeans onto your fabrics because we've also... Had a question about that for any new listeners. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is It is actually remarkable how some men really set the bar as low as it can go, really. Yeah. I feel like I've entered a like a pole vaulting competition, except someone has just taken the pole of like the, the actual like meter away. So I can really just walk across mm-hmm. and, and kind of flop down onto the cushion at the other side and be like, I did it. I've won. Yeah. Someone's buried the pole and a bunch of men are trying to worm their way through the ground and you're just stepping over it and getting full points. 
Yeah. Not that I encourage, I'm not encouraging men to do bare minimum, but no, I'm just it's saying. it's good for us. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying, you know, it is the bare minimum right now. Is, if you're doing that, you're in good shape. No, you should do more, but you should also wipe your butt and not call things gay. You should absolutely. At least not in a derogatory way. Ready? Yep. This is Rocco's modern gripe. (laughs) My partner of six months is giving me an ultimatum I don't think is fair. I, 34-year-old male, began dating Riley, or Rylery, 38-year-old male, about six months ago. Date was good. We enjoyed. Hmm? I'm just saying your first fucking mistake was dating a guy named Rylery. I assume that's a fake name. I fucking hope so. Hey, yeah. Hey, it is a fake name. That's not a name (laughs) anyone has. Yeah, it's very confusing. I don't know. They have it in like quotation marks. So I don't know. Does that mean they're quoting him and it's actual fact? Anyway, Rylery's 38. Question asker's 34. Presumably Rocco. Six months dating. Date was good. We enjoyed spending time together. He has never communicated any indication he was unhappy with our sex lives until recently. He's been apprehensive about oral sex giving. I give more than he does. However, it became real apparent recently as he gave really mixed signals and then fully stopped. I stopped out play and was generally worried. He admitted that he does not like to give me head. It's not that he doesn't like to give head. He doesn't like to give me head specifically because I'm not circumcised. I was taken by surprise by his comment. He further explained that he doesn't think this relationship will last unless I get a circumcision like him. I asked him what it was about my foreskin that made him not like it. Like, I'd understand if it was because I don't wash or smell, but I keep my dick fresh, clean, and sanitary. He didn't mention any of that. He just said he didn't like the way it looked and didn't like that he had to pull back the skin to keep it from enveloping my head. I've never had a problem with someone not into my penis. I laughed a bit because it seemed like a ridiculous ask, and he got upset for not taking his feelings into account and stormed off. He called me, said he talked it over with his friends, and either I get a circumcision or it's over. I mean, I know my answer. I'm going to be single, but am I wrong on this? Is there something I don't know? Is this a normal request? I'm just lost. No, this isn't a normal request. One, the idea of circumcisions in this day and age is wild to me, just in general. Like, I I understand that it is a, there is a religious aspect for some people. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, it's still crazy to me. And this is coming from, like, I am circumcised. I still like, why? Why do we do it? I don't know. Like it yeah. is specifically like we want to talk about genital mutilation and shit. We do it on the regular. And there are people who are saying, oh, you didn't have a part of your genitals cut off. I don't find that attractive. Like that's fucked up. Like the, uh, one of the big reasons people are still circumcising or yeah, circumcising their kids is an aesthetic appeal. And that's yeah, which is also like nothing wrong with a dick with a foreskin on it. In my opinion, as an uncircumcised man. But like, one, I've never been circumcised. My dick's fine. You just wash it. Easy. Two, like, you still have to wash a dick that's circumcised. Three. Wait, hold on. Hold on. You do? Oh, shit. I've I've been spending all my time washing my own butt. That's so awful. (laughs) No. (laughs) uh, Dane won't seep through the couch, it says on his Tinder profile, unless he lies on his front. (laughs) Yeah. Three, I cannot, I don't know what number I'm on. Three, I cannot imagine the sheer trauma of doing that as an adult. At least as a kid, presumably you can't remember it. I, I do not remember my circumcision because I Good. was probably a bibe. I was yeah. a small bibe. The idea of going into a doctor's office and being like, hello, it is time for me, an adult man, to have a a, a fairly sizable portion of my penis to be removed and it's like why oh this guy i've been dating for not even a year for six months Mm -hmm. just likes it better that way yeah (laughs) it's crazy oh well have you like like is hygiene uh no that that's not the issue he just doesn't like the shape of it i guess or something like like no this is fucked now the best thing is from the comments the guy followed up saying he has a guy that he can call locally he'll do it through health insurance And he's been in this situation before because all his exes have to get through it. And some of them have gone through with it. I feel really bad for those guys. Yeah, because that's the thing. It's like, one, I I almost said, like, hey, if you, like, stayed together and got married, that'd be one thing. That still sucks because your partner still was like, hey, mutilate yourself. Ha, ha, ha. Like, fuck you. But two, imagine doing this for someone and then you just break up anyway. It's like, well, cool. My dick hurts so bad for those, I assume, at least 
weeks of recovery. Yeah, I mean, I don't really know what the 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 recovery of an adult circumcision is. You know what's crazy? About. As a kid, that probably sucks. But whatever, you're a kid, you don't remember. When you're an adult, you can also get erections. Imagine you got a boner with your wound. Yeah. Ow. Your partner sucks. Break up with him. I'm glad that you're on the right side of this, that you're going to. But no, you are not in the wrong. There isn't something you don't know. This isn't a normal request. And this person sucks. And I do want to say, like... You know, once again, going back to beauty standards and the the societal expectation of of what we should look like, especially when it comes to like sexual genitals and what we should look like in a sexual uh, existence. It, we there's a lot of conversation about women and body positive for for their bodies, and you know we we talk about loving all shapes and stuff, but there really isn't a whole lot of communication, and there is a, a fairly large portion of people who who push back on uncircumcised or yeah uncircumcised men because like no one draws dicks with foreskin on it, no kid at, on his notebook is doodling fucking foreskin dicks. It's it's usually like a like a circumcised penis because that is and like it's pretty much all you see in porn. So I I think there is like, like we should have a little bit more of a conversation of being like of normalizing the fact that uncircumcised penises literally ha- are no different than circumcised penises. They are they're just dicks. See, and- it's really weird because coming from Ireland, you unless you had a religious reason to have it done or a health reason, nobody was circumcised. And, like, not a lot of people needed it done for health reasons or religious reasons. So, like, the large majority of people aren't circumcised. So it's only when you come over here and then that's all of a sudden notable. Again, I've never had an issue with it. I never had a partner complain or even really comment on it. But, like, yeah, literally never had a bad experience with it. But it's really bizarre to me just that, like, it's not the norm. So, I don't know. I I just think it's important to... Uh, when we're talking about body positivity and we're talking about, you know, making sure that everyone feels comfortable in their body, that we don't exclude uh, or, you know, circumcision status in that conversation. Because I For do sure. think that that people do get, you know, hung up on it. I do think people get shook by it. I think people get insecure about it. Um, and I think it's it's worth worth mentioning that your dick is fine. Mm-hmm. Also, a partner like asking you to get cosmetic things to suit their preference. Fucked. That's not cool. It's no different than someone being like, oh, you're a little too heavy. Go get a tummy tuck. Or, you know, I prefer the Brazilian people with- butt lift, even though it's one of the most fatal fucking cosmetic surgeries out there. Yeah. Or, you know, I, I prefer women like button noses. So if you want to go get a nose job done mm-hmm. or I prefer high cheekbones, go get your face reconstructed. Because, like, you can't uncirc like, recircumcise yourself. No. If you staple it back on there, it doesn't work. No. No, it's fucked. And also, last thing I'll say about this, the weird, like, he got back to me and said he talked to his friends and has come up with the ultimate, like, what? Who is this fucking shitty, dusty child? And also, who's this guy that he's got on, like, speed dial to do his, like, under the table fucking (laughs) circumcisions? I want to know, like, is this just a ring? Is this just, like, an illegal circumcision ring? And what they're smuggling is your foreskin away? Foreskins? Yeah. But, like, maybe that's just a racket they have. Like, Ryler is just super hot, and this is his M.O. It's like Paul Walker in Fast and the Furious. He gets into your, you know, your cool friend group. He pretends he's a street racer slash cool, sexy guy. And then just when you think you can trust him, he's like, got to cut your foreskin off. Don't worry. Bob's on call. (laughs) I live my life a quarter foreskin at a a time. But instead, Uh, uh, it's it's basically a shot for shot Fast and Furious. But instead of family, he just says foreskin. Yeah. This guy's got to be getting kickbacks from this. He's got to be getting kickbacks. I wonder if it's. Like I think you're onto something here, because like we've got blood babies or blood childs or blood boys uh, or whatever the fuck they were. Boys. Let's blood use boys. the proper terminology. I wonder if there's like some sort of like youth serum that's made from like ground up foreskin or something. There's gotta be. Right? So like they're shipping this off to some far off land who's processing these supple foreskins that the this far man off is land harvested. is definitely Iowa. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely Iowa. Let's be real. It's probably Florida. Iowa, Florida. <laughs> um, okay. We are running out of time, and I have two more questions okay. from people who sent more, them in. So fucking get in there. Well, these are more important. This one's great, though. Go, go, go. 
Agent High Visibility Vest. Last year during Pride Month, I, 28-year-old female, fully came out as bi to my friends and family. Yeah. Most people close to me already knew, but it was kind of a big deal for me to officially announce it. My boyfriend congrats. was super supportive. Yes, congratulations. My boyfriend was super supportive and loving about it at the time. Since then, he'll playfully ask me which women I think are hot or would point out women he thinks is attractive to get my opinion. It started out as a fun little game at first, but it's since shifted to a more accusatory game where instead of asking me if I think people are hot, he just assumes that I find random women attractive and that seems to get him upset. I've tried talking to him about it, but he insists that he's just joking and that it doesn't bother him. So a person I know came out as bi and their boyfriend didn't take it well. And at one point I tried to talk to him and I was like, it's not like anything has changed or blah, blah, blah. And it essentially boiled down. They were like, well, I used to have to be jealous of half the world. Now I have to be jealous of everyone. And I was like, damn, that's the worst way to go with this information, <laughs> this new nugget. And it was awful. And I, I worry that this person has gone that way. And unfortunately, you tried to do the talking and, and that's advice that we would give. And they're not meeting you halfway, which means you need to do the talking again and not take that answer. Because if it's something they keep doing, obviously it's bothering them. So tell them that. Be like, hey, I know you said it's not bothering you, but one, it's bothering me. And two, it really does seem like you're bother it's bothering you because you're like accusing me all the time and you don't seem comfortable. Like, what is this about? Can we talk? Do you not trust me now that I'm by for some reason? Because that's an insane thing. Again, it's like, it, it seems to be a thing people do where it's like, I, I wonder if it's a mixture of, again, doubling the pool of people of potential partners, but two, like worrying that because they're by that you're not it for them. You know what I mean? Cause you're only a guy and they like guys and girls. So now all of a sudden you're like, damn, there are things a girl can provide that I can't. And just like that insecurity. But either way, this guy should trust his partner regardless of sexual orientation. It's funny that like the second someone says they're bi, people just immediately assume they're just like an insatiable whore, right? Yeah. Like that's that's like the unfair sort of, uh, you know, that or like, like just pick one. Oh, you're not bi because you only, you know what I mean? Like there's, there's like those two vibes that people get of just being like, oh, you want to fuck everyone or you're not really bi because you only date men. Yes. I find like bi, bi is such a bizarre thing because people really like to either be like, oh no, you're just gay, but you slept with a guy once or mm, you're really straight though, aren't you? You've got a boyfriend. That's like, you're just doing off. it for like, attention. Yeah. Or, or something like it's, it's just this weird, like dismissal so like yeah. one don't do that people come on 2023 but two you really gotta just nail them down and have this conversation i don't mean that literally i think what you said is very important of being like hi you said it doesn't bother you but it's starting to bother me yeah i don't like being grilled every time we're out and told that i must find that person attractive it's like you know that sucked it's boring it would be the same thing as like if every time we were in a bar or we went out or whatever, I was like, oh, you're looking at her? You're looking at her? You're looking yeah. at, like, that sucks. It's, it's insecure. It's not fun. It puts me on guard. It makes me uncomfortable. And it makes me feel like everything I'm doing is being judged and everything mm. I, like, you know what I mean? It's like, and it's like you're specifically- probably walking on eggshells constantly. Cause like, God forbid you smile at the bartender or the Starbucks person or anybody passing by or look off in the distance or, have someone walk past you like Jesus Christ. So I bet like what and like why this happened, I bet it started with him in fantasy mode of being like, oh, yeah, we're a fuck everyone like threesomes, <laughs> threesomes, threesomes. It's going to be great. And then when he realized that like, oh, no, she's still a monogamous partner who just happens to like both, you know, be, be into everyone and doesn't really care. You know what I mean? Like doesn't have a preference one way or the other, but defines men and women attractive equally. Uh, and then I think it probably spiraled down into what this other guy was like, where he's just like, oh, fuck, everyone is a competition. Everyone's a threat. I could be, you know, at any moment I could be whisked or she could be whisked away by someone more attractive than me. Mm -hmm. And has like it, it start like that game started as something fun for him. And as he slowly realized it being like, oh, no, <laughs> it's become more of a like him checking in being like, you find her attractive. OK, oh, I'm safe. I'm good. I'm all right. Um, and that sucks. That's that's a shit thing to do to 
just because of someone's sexuality, I, like make a judgment call on their morals or their intent or their fidelity. You know what I mean? Like it, it just sucks. It's like to just be like, oh, you're bi now, even though you were always bi when I met you and when we were together and that mm-hmm. didn't change anything. Now I feel like you might leave me immediately because there is a hot woman at the end of the bar. Despite the fact that there have been hot women by you the entire yes. time we've been together. Now, because you've said it out loud and have acknowledged it, now it's a threat. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, that's such a good point to raise up. Be like, I'm not just by now. I have been by all the time. Like, nothing. And nothing has changed. And again, if you're monogamous and you like men, or you're monogamous and you like men and women, or you're monogamous and you like women, there's no fucking difference between those three things. You're monogamous or you're not, and that presumably is the issue. So it's like, why does your sexuality being changed, or at least being, you know, admitted? make you any less trustworthy it's fucked yeah. so you really just gotta sit him down and if he's trying to fucking fob off the issue be like cool well it bothers me so you can't downplay that and let's fucking talk about it yeah and you know I what think that's the angle you gotta go yeah and if they can't handle it fuck it you got a whole world to fuck no yeah you've got a, a you got a bars filled with hot people but like unfortunately some people's egos can't take it don't be afraid to set limits and boundaries and if they're crossed to move on because sometimes it it could just be such an agony staying in a relationship with somebody who is so cripplingly jealous or insecure and it's just not good don't do what i did don't stay in it too long all right hit me with your one and then we'll see if we can fit my one in okay i'm worried this one might be this one could be short or this one could be fast look at this dane doing two questions in a row this never happens i know this is agent touch and go i wouldn't consider myself bi because i've never been with a woman as we just said, not necessarily true. I, yeah, I was, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I've always found other women sexually attractive. You're bi. Yeah. I think lack of opportunity is the real reason I haven't hooked up with a woman. However, one of my friends, we'll call her Stacy, has recently started hooking up with other, another woman, and they have invited me to play with them. I'm very excited by the idea, but I'm worried that the pressure of disappointing two women will get in my head. What tips can you give a little biling noob on pleasuring women? Hell yeah. I like this question. Uh, yeah. Firstly... It's a friend of yours, right? Yes. So if your friends tell them, be like, hey, this is my first time. I'm a little nervous. If they're anyway cool, that's going to be exciting and fun for them. And we'll just hopefully be a big, lovely, warm, cuddly, great, sexy, wet moment for all you guys. That is that's what I want to pitch to you. I think what you need to do for this and it's going to sound a little selfish, but fuck it. Live your best life. Go in and be like, hey. I've never been with a woman and I'm not really sure what I need to do. Is it cool if I kind of like be the center of attention and just (laughs) enjoy you guys? And like, I feel like if if a woman came to me and I was, uh, you know, if I was with a partner and we found another woman that we wanted to bring in as third and she was like, I just kind of want to be spoiled. I just want to be, you know what I mean? Like I, you know, I, I've never done this before and I kind of want to be taken care of and just kind of like eased into it. I would be so fucking hyped and pumped to communicate with my partner to be like, this night's theirs. Let's Mm -hmm. like, let's just blow their fucking mind. Yeah. And we'll do everything. You know what I mean? Like we'll do everything for. Now, my worry is if you're nervous, that also kind of might seem like a weird slash big ask. You know what I mean? I don't think, I don't think you have to like, maybe go that. I don't think you have to specifically ask it for it, but I think mm -hmm. what you said, like, I think you do have to be like, Hey, little nervous. I've never done this before. Can we lower the expectations for me a little or bit? Just like, how about you guys show me the ropes? Yeah. Again, I, I imagine everybody's going to be very excited. Like I would love to be that person. Yes. I think they would love to be that person. And that's the thing. It's like, no one's like, Oh, we invited this person. Who's like an adorable newbie. And they didn't fucking ro- walk in and fucking slam me on the bed and rock my world immediately. Like that's not what they're expecting. And I imagine it's not what they want. <laughs> they weren't finger banging both of us like they were a fucking master puppeteer. Like one of us on both fucking yeah, arms. They could just, just levitate us both just by fingers alone. You know, they weren't yeah. lifting us up and bench pressing us. Like that's not what they expect. So like I understand the nerves, but throw that out the window. They're not expecting that. I assume they're expecting what the reality will be, which is you're going to be there. It's You're going to be a little nervous, but you're going to be willing to explore And that's going to be super fucking exciting for everybody involved, presumably. Two, you're not a newbie because you are, in fact, a woman. So presumably you have masturbated. 
so you don't like you're not going in blind as to what people like. And yes, everybody's different, literally and metaphorically. But like, you know how to work a clit, presumably. If men can figure it out and they don't have the parts and they're dumb and are scared to wipe their own butts, I'm sure you can figure it out. I'm sure you can figure it out if you haven't already figured it out. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, I don't even know if we need to get into the details of, like, where to touch and how, because I imagine that would be, like, mansplaining right now, because you've got a clit, presumably. Yeah, I I think the things you need to focus on in order for this to be fun is have go out, have a drink with these people first and, like, loosen up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Get to know them a little bit. Get comfortable with them. Because walking in as a bundle of nerves and then trying to just get into sex Mm -hmm. isn't probably going to be the best way to do it. So ask if, like, you guys can go meet at a a nearby bar, have a drink or two, chat with them, get to know them, joke around with them. And I would have a conversation as well separately with just your friend before all this and be like, hey, as you said, like, you know, talk about the fact that you're new, talk about your concerns, talk about your um, your your nervousness and, and what you're worried about and your you know all that kind of stuff, so that they can relay that to their partner, so that everyone is on the same page, and then just go in nice and slow and enjoy every fucking moment. And mm-hmm. the thing is, the nice thing about a threesome, if you feel like you're not pulling your weight or you might have a little bit more to learn, there's literally another person in the room who can finish the job for you. And presumably if they're hooking up together, they enjoy having sex together. Mm -hmm. So worst case scenario, you give it your best college try. You do your, your hardest, your damnedest. And if, and if you're still figuring it out, you sit back and watch your two hot friends go at it for a bit. Mm -hmm. Or you Uh, like relegate yourself to support and you kiss her on the neck while her friend goes down on her. You know what I mean? Or you just like play with her tits while, you know, like you can do some very, basic stuff that will add to their experience that you you'll be able to do while her friends rock in her world or just sit back and enjoy it because if you're like that super hot they're gonna like that too that so that's another point i want to make one of my favorite uh things that's ever happened to me during a threesome was i was having sex with one of them and the other one was like lying beside her and just sort of like talking in her ear and like playing and kissing and touching and just talking about how fucking hot she found all of it. Mm -hmm. And that was to me, I was like, you need to shut the fuck up right now because (laughs) I'm trying to work here. Um, Because I thought, I just thought it was so fucking sexy to have someone not only pleasing the partner that I'm also pleasing, but someone sitting there and admiring both of us Mm -hmm. doing our thing. I've never had a threesome, but the closest I ever got to was one of the hottest things where literally there was a girl on the other bed in the hotel room. And like when we started hooking up, she just, again, was like watching and appreciating very like verbally. And it was very hot. Yeah, it's great. So just do that. Like there's so much you can do. I will say a few things, right? Don't be like being a nervous wreck isn't sexy, but being nervous can be. So it's like, don't like fall to pieces. But, like, I don't think you need to hide it, really. You know what I mean? Be honest with your friend. Have a chat with them. Let them know Mm -hmm. you're inexperienced. Let them know you're a little bit nervous. They'll probably find it very endearing. And then I will also say confidence is sexy. But you can be, like, confident in your newness and confident in your nervousness. I don't think you going in there and pretending to be some kind of, like, Casanova. Like, you know what I mean? If you walk in and you feign this personality and you try to act like you're the shit, like – ever it's it's not good especially in the bedroom whereas if you go in and like yeah you're nervous here or whatever but you're still confident like you're willing to own that and like learn and participate and like be loose that's going to be super hot and cool for everybody because you're going to be in the moment you're going to be enjoying it you're not going to be in your own head trying to be like shit act cool shit act like you know this blah 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 they're going to know where you're at and then you're all just going to have fun like i you got this yeah i i think that's a really good point of being like Trying to pretend like you have the like if you haven't earned the level of confidence you're projecting, it's going to fall flat. Like that's not the sexy confidence that everyone talks about. Mm -hmm. The confidence is the fact that like you are just owning the truth of the moment as it happens and whatever that is, whatever it means. And like that's something I really like to do and something that I get complimented a lot on. A lot of people, you know after I've slept with them for the first time or we've hooked up for the first time, they're like, you're, you know, 
one of the sexiest things about you is your confidence. And it's not like I walk in and been like, I'm going to eat your pussy so good. You're going to come in two minutes. I'm going to do well, this. I'm going to last yeah. forever. What it is, is you walk in, you say it's Dane time. And then you play the the theme tune that me and you worked on a few summers ago. Yeah. Um, it's it's and just then, us going yum, 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 yum. With like Dane sick, time, Dane time. Yum, 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 yum. Yeah. Yummy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> We're actually um, selling that ringtone on our website, by the way. But you have to promise you're not going to use it in the bedroom because that's Dane's confident, cool move. Okay? I will sue you. He will sue S- you. I will sue you into fucking oblivion. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got this. I hope you have the best threesome ever, and you're going to love it. Let's yes. see your question. Uh, no, I'll just say it for next time. Okay. Unless you want um, to, no, let's do it. Let's do it real quick. Let's okay. do it. We'll, we'll skip Tinder. Fuck Tinder. Fuck Tinder. This is by Fondike. 99 F O N D E I C fun days. I don't know. It just sounded like I said fun dyke and that's not what it is. <laughs> I thought that was the joke because it's pride and maybe it is. I don't know, but it is a gay guy. So anyway, landlord demanded proof. I don't have grinder on my phone. Is this a big red flag? Moved into a new town, found an apartment really close to where I worked. Looked nice, not expensive. Contacted the landlord and we arranged to meet so I can see the apartment in person. Engaged in small talk, and he was talking about how nice it is to be a grandfather and things like that. Asked me if I have kids or a girlfriend, to which I told him I'm gay, so yeah, no. I immediately noticed a demeanor change, and I was like, oh boy, here comes the homophobia. He said it's cool, he's not opposed to it at all, but he heard how gay apps are basically DoorDash for sex, and doesn't want people bringing someone every day into his apartment and making his place a sex den. I told him I'm not like that. I'm an introverted guy and don't really like to meet so many people this way. He said he needs proof of it and demanded I show him what's on my phone. I didn't actually have Grindr installed, so I showed him I didn't have it. I was going through the apps, and after he saw it's not there, he made me go to the app store to see if the Grindr page says downloaded or open. I was pretty taken aback by all this, but I like the place, and it's literally next to my workplace. I'm worried, though, that he might do other controlling things that are not legal while I'm staying there. Do you think I should rent the place? I'm staying with my aunt right now, so I don't really have much time on my hands to look for other places. Look, this is tough for me because I don't know where you live, but I know how much of a fucking hellscape nightmare apartment hunting is, yeah. especially finding a place that you like and can afford. So, like, that's really, really weighing on me and really coloring my answer. I to know. Me. Obviously, this is so inappropriate. This is so, so shitty. Fucked. It's homophobic. Legal. It's illegal. It's bigoted. It's, it's, it's ignorant. It's bad. It's so bad. It's fucking terrible. I, I, I as long, but like the thing is, like I don't know if this guy lives in the building or if you're renting like a basement apartment. And he lives above you. If this is just like a landlord that you're never going to see, I don't think it's going to be a problem, right? Hmm. But I think if he's going, I think if he's on the premises, I think if he's in the building. I think you're going to have a worse time because it doesn't fucking matter if you go on one date a year. I bet you he's going to see that one guy come home with you Mm -hmm. and all of a sudden it's a knock at your door and be like, hey, where did you meet him? Where did blah, 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 blah. And I promise you he's not checking people's fucking phones for Tinder. Oh, for for sure. I'm sure he's not looking at fucking Bumble or Hinge. And like when I was in my 20s. I was the amount of women that were coming over to my place through Tinder was oh, for sure yeah. probably probably more than this guy's bringing home even if he had grinder installed and like no one gave a shit no one no one grilled me about that and it's it's just so scummy but you do need to live somewhere sometimes you do got to live somewhere now I when I was actually like homeless for the first month I got to Canada fucking over a decade ago I saw a place and she had this book of rules and was like, you can't bring people over. And I was like, well, that will be happening. So I had to leave. But she did live in the apartment. So that was a different situation. And she did try to get me to go to her church. Uh, Look, is this a red flag? Yes. Is this a terrible, awful thing that no landlord should do? Yes. If you live here, is the possibility that something like this happens again pretty high? Yeah. I would take a few things into account. One. Like, how safe do you feel? Because your personal level of safety is always going to vary. And if you're not going to feel safe in your home, it doesn't matter how reasonable it is or how close to work it is. Your life's going to suck because you're never going to be able to relax. Two, what is the landlord tenant board situation in your city? Toronto has a pretty good one. And I'm not too confident in saying that. But as far as I'm aware, it is pretty decent. So if you do... I would immediately and constantly make 
detailed notes of every single infringement that he does and bring him to the tenant landlord tenant board if if needs be and always record if he comes over and also make sure there's no cameras in your apartment thirdly what granddad knows this much about grinder i mean that's that's a good point the fact that he knows like the hookup app for gay people is kind of suspicious he also knows how the app store works he was like, oh, I got to make sure you don't have it hidden anywhere else by checking the stat. My granddad doesn't know what a phone is. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I had to email my parents a link the other day, and that was that was like a whole ordeal. So, I, yeah, I can't tell if my parents are very good or very bad with phones because my mom manages to send me custom links. And by custom, I mean she's managed to warp them. To make them look like the most sketchy will immediately steal every ounce of my money and data and maybe soul, even if they're just like a link to a fucking article on a newspaper. You know what I mean? They always look, they're like a million characters long. Anyway, so this is Uh, us for me. I think, I think the, the key here is, as Nell said, safety. If you think this guy's gonna fucking kill you because you're gay. Don't move there, obviously. Well, yes. <laughs> Two, uh, the, the landlord and tenant board is a great, great option. I would immediately go and see what the status is and, and look up things of being like, how much right does a landlord have about controlling who's in? I would also take a look at the lease and make sure you're not agreeing to anything. Yeah. Very even in though, your lease. Again, depending on the place you are. But in Canada, for example, even if you sign a lease, if one of the clauses is illegal, they can't uphold it. For example, not having pets. Yeah. Um, so just just take some just take a quick moment and do a quick like look and see what kind of protections you have on your side. Because yeah. at the end of the day, yeah, you you got to live somewhere. But like if this guy ends up pulling some bullshit, I got a lot of money from one of my landlords who tried to fuck me over. So, mm. yeah, it sucks. Yes, it's a lot of work. Yes, you have to move again. But fleecing a fucking homophobe out of some some cash so that you can live in a nicer place. Not the worst, <laughs> the worst way to, for a situation to go poorly, you know? Now, I would not move in with the hopes of it going poorly like that. I would just say check protections. If you live in some book wild state in America where landlords could do whatever the fuck they want, don't don't do it. I don't think. I really think there it's it's so many red flags that unless you have some kind of protection, it's not worth it. But if you, you know, maybe maybe it's just that was it and that was his weird hang up and now he'll leave you alone, hopefully. But I would I would be wary because that's not cool. But that's going to do it for us, friends. Uh, we went long with questions, so we're not going to do Tinders, uh, which is fine because I don't want to open Tinder anyway. Um, my landlord doesn't let me. Uh, thank you very much for hanging out with us. Uh, happy Pride. We hope you enjoyed our, our Pride episode. Um, if you have a question that you know would have fit great on this episode, don't think you have to wait until next year. You can still mm-hmm. send it in to us. Every day, every month is Pride Month and Pride Day for us. Every episode is Pride episode. Yeah. We, we just like you. to put a little bit more weight on this one, you know? Um, so head on over to fbuddiespodcast.com, click the contact form, uh, fill it out. You get to choose your own agent name, like the people who sent in my questions, um, and uh, we'll answer them as soon as you can, or as soon as we can on any episode, not just the pride one. Um, also, if you enjoyed the episode and you enjoy the show and you want to help support us, feel free to hop on over to fbuddiespodcast.com and click the Patreon link. Um, you have a bunch of different options, a way to support us. Um, the middle tier will get you an extra episode every month called Pillow Talk, where we you know we're a little loosey goosey we do the same sort of stuff but with a lot more uh casual we we just go into it and have a lot of fun 100 percent. thank you josh eagle and the harvest cities for your the song paper stars their song paper stars uh you got some bad sex writing for me okay are you comfortable yeah so this is going to be a short one and this is a woman writing about uh two men having sex and she says he was so horny his ass got super wet <laughs> I hmm, I don't you know I don't I we're not even gonna talk about it. My name is Dave Miller. I'm now Spain. We've been your wet ass boys. Hmm. 